Hi, so yesterday in class we went over how to create a thumbnail and I had posted this picture as this is a thumbnail. So this is actually, we'll just recreate this today just so you can get an example of what you need to do. I actually used PicMonkey and that's what we used in class yesterday. Also, you can also use Canva. I just know PicMonkey better so that is why I choose to use PicMonkey. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create that. You would go in PicMonkey, you would go to create new, click on that, and then you can do a template or you can do blank canvas. I choose a blank canvas and then you could either type up here YouTube thumbnail um, or if you scroll all the way down it's in alphabetical order. And then that's going to open up not blank ones, so you want blank. YouTube or you can choose to use one of these if you wanted to and then just edit it to what you like. So we're going to customize this template and then I'm going to change the name to whatever um, the file name is for my video, whatever my keyword research said is the top keyword for that video. Um, for this video, I mean for this one, we'll just put this is a thumbnail. And we're going to go ahead and create. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and drag in a photo that if you don't already have a photo in here, you would click on computer. I already have a photo in my hub. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick this one to use because I know it already has a transparent background. If you have a photo of yourself that doesn't have a transparent background, go ahead and go to remove dot bg and that'll take you to this website where you can upload an image of yourself let me find an image um, that has oops what am I doing uh, let's go to real estate folder and then um, Michelle's real estate photos I have a couple of photos here I think that have backgrounds. Let's just choose this one and you'll see it'll automatically remove the background. So here's my background removed and then I would just download this and save this um, to my desktop and then I would upload it into PicMonkey and then that's how I would use it. So whenever you're doing a thumbnail, you want to make sure you are bigger than life. So I know it's uncomfortable to start yourself making silly photos, but it works. When you're filming your video, you can go ahead and just take um, pause for a couple minutes and make these poses. And then you can take those poses and turn them into photos for your thumbnails. So now if I wanted to add text, I would go ahead and click on text over here on the left column and then click on add text. And then I would, you don't have to use the title of your video in the thumbnail. I would just use some kind of teaser. Um, this is a thumbnail. Okay, so um, you can just use a teaser. Thank you. Or whatever, I mean, whatever you wanted to. If you were doing something on inspections, you'd be like, are inspections scary? Or you don't have to be scared by inspections, whatever you wanted to do. And then you just play around with that until you get what you like. I always recommend that when you are doing fonts, don't use script fonts. Go ahead and um, use a font that is bold and thick or something that's really going to stand out. I like chunk five. Um, and if you scroll through, just look for some, some fonts that are um, just really stand out because most people who are watching YouTube videos are going to watch on their, their mobile phone. So those fancy texts kind of get lost and you want to make sure that you're getting a good click-through rate based on your the performance of your thumbnail. Um, we'll go ahead and or you could bada boom is another one that's pretty decent. Um, we'll go ahead and use the I think I used Chivo Black when I did this. 
Um, I don't change around with the color much yet until I know what kind of background I'm going to put on it. Some backgrounds you're going to want to use a photo. Um, this background I just used a, a glitter background. Um, and if you want to add a decoration to it, you would just go over to your graphics. And for this one I added a star. Uh, and you can go ahead and pick whatever star you want to use. You can play around with the star as well. Um, on the star, like here, if you see up here, it has two colors, black and white. I can change the black to pink. I can make the white transparent so it'll show through whatever my background is. I can make the, you know, change it to whatever color you want. Uh, another thing you can do to add dimension to this would be, and even to your text, would be in the back, when you click on whatever object it is you're editing, it'll show adjust, effects, erase. So if I wanted to erase part of the star for whatever reason, I would just click on erase and just erase part of the star. Um, if I made a mistake, you would just click undo, or you could actually brush it back in right here and just click on the brush and brush it back in. Um, another thing you can do is a drop shadow. So if I wanted to make a black drop shadow so it makes it look like the star is popping off the page, you can do that. You can do high intensity. You can fade it out so it's more black behind it. Um, and then you can change the angle of it. You can change the distance of it so it looks like it's really far off. Um, just You have to be careful with it because you can overdo it. Um, you could do the scale, so that would be drop shadow. Inner shadow is going to do inside, same effect. You can do that. Uh, and then outline, we're going to do that again, but you could change the color and maybe just outline the star black. That's kind of cool. That makes it pop out. Um, and then for your background, so now I would probably go ahead and choose my background because all the other colors are going to revolve around whatever background I use. And here I would go to textures. I actually used glitter for this one. I think I used, oh, not on me. See, you can make yourself into glitter. <laughs> so whatever you have highlighted at that moment when you go over, you can actually, like if I wanted to, I can make the star glitter. Here, if I made a transparent background or over it. So you can even change that and make that into a glitter. Um, but for me, let's see, cancel. We're just gonna do the background. Oh, sorry, that's why. You have to click a background color before you can actually add a foil. So let's just do like a pink background right now apply and then I would go to textures and then add my glitter background and what color oh let's see so there's pink and then there I think this is the one that I used but I did saturation I moved it all the way up so that it was really bright so now that I've got my background I'm going ahead now I would probably want to change this to a different color so it really stood out but first I'm going to apply that and I'm going to click on myself because one of the things I want to do to myself is make myself kind of pop out from the thumbnail and that you click on yourself or here's another way you can do it you can click on layers and click on whatever um, thing you want to work on over here so we're going to work on me and we're going to add an outline to me. And let's see. That's pink, so it's not going to show. So we're going to make it white. So now we've added the white background. I can make it as thick as I want to make it. Um, I could intensify it or not make it so intensified. Uh, you can also intensify it or thick, thicken it but then fade it out a little bit which is another cool effect because it just kind of changes the color to fade into the background. You can also do knockout which would just knock you out and leave your shadow but for this purpose I wouldn't do that. You can do that with your font as well. So now let's go ahead and work on our wording. Um, 
because it's so bright in the back, I would make it a white background. I mean, a white font. Oops, I didn't click on it right. I would make the font white on this background. But that doesn't pop out for me just having it like that. So I would definitely add an effect to it. Like a drop shadow. And I would intensify that, maybe fade it down so it's more... And then that too, you can scale it so it looks like it's blurred there. You can blur it out this way so it looks like a blob. Another thing you can do is if I wanted to have a star show behind my text, if I wanted to like see right there, it's in front of it. If I want to put the star behind the text, I would just come over here into my layers down here, click on the layers. And then I would click on my double star and drag it down to whatever element I wanted it to be behind. So now if I were to drag it, it would be behind my text. Uh, let's see. Now if I want to make the star transparent, I thought I did, but I didn't. Um, I can do that and then it would have the stars behind it. But I really like how the white pops off of um, this background. I'm trying to think if there's anything else really quick I can show you. The outline's kind of thick for me. I don't really like big, thick outlines, just enough. Um, if you wanted to add a photo behind here as a as your background, you can go ahead and go over to Photos. And say we're doing Tampa. This is some of the things we did yesterday. You can click in Tampa over here and say we were highlighting, I don't know what building, the Sykes building, is that what this is? You don't really want to distort it by, you always want to keep the ratio. So say we were doing a story on this building and now I click on my layers because I need to bring it behind everything. And then that would be my background. If I was saying this is the Sykes building or whatever building that is. Um, let's see. But we're not going to do that. So if I don't want something, I would just click on it over here or click it on here. It's easier to do it in your layers and then just delete it. Another thing, you, some other places to get some photos, I'm going to open a new tab, is Pixabay. These, you won't have to worry about copyright issues. So um, they have some photos of Tampa and Pixabay that you can use. Um, and then Another place would be Unsplash. And let's see, Tampa. So there would be some, these are a little bit more artsy photos, I think, on Unsplash than Pixabay. But there's a good Bush Gardens photo right there if you were doing a picture on Bush Garden. I mean, uh, so you would just save this, download it free. So I've downloaded it and then I would go back to pick monkey and I would add my own image from computer. Oops, I need to hold on. I need to put it to my because I don't have it saved. So then I would add the image from my computer. And it's on my desktop. So now if I was doing a video on Bush Gardens, I would make this my background, drag it behind everything. Another thing you can do is if I wanted to change the color on the background, if I wanted to make it more pink or orange to go with the colors of my branding, you can actually Click on it over here in layers, click on color, and you can kind of, you can either fade it out, you can make it a color to just really pop. Maybe if orange, I forgot what orange was, I'll have to put that in the description. Uh, Lisa was able to give us what orange, what the number is for the orange that we use at, at, at a line rate. Um, but you could certainly give it a, an orange tint. Another thing you can do is 
I'm gonna go ahead and erase this because I wanna, since the image is over here, I can either flip the image. If you click on layers, you can either flip the image and I can, you know, do that or I can move myself over there and flip me and then flip the image back. I tend to like to put myself on the other side, on the left side, only because I, I like read left to right, so I feel like the thumbnail kind of needs to read left to right. Weird, but, uh, and then you could maybe put your verbiage down here. This is a roller coaster. <laughs> And then maybe resize that because it's a little big and size it down. Now this is a super quick tutorial and there's probably a lot more things you might have questions about, but this is just a basic understanding of how you would go about creating your thumbnail. And then if you have specific questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments so that I can address those individually. So I hope that helps. See you next time, guys.